Wow, you can literally see the conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter with the naked eye, but at 3,000 millimeter, it looks insanely cool. Can you see it? I can literally see it with my naked eye. It's quite something. They're literally so close together. And in this video, we're gonna try to shoot it at 3,000 millimeter. And in a moment, I will tell you how I got to this focal distance. Let's try to set up. Okay, so let's start with the first setup. Barely with the 500 millimeter shooting in full frame in 4K. This is the 500 millimeter PF. Uh, I'm shooting on the Z6 one original. And in the full frame 4K mode, I'm shooting at 1 25th of a second just to let more light in. You don't need 1 50th when shooting something like that. I'm shooting at 5.6 and ISO 1600. Uh, oh yeah, and a little bit about the setup. I'm actually shooting on a geared head because a geared head is really much more convenient when it comes to precision. When I need to just adjust so that the uh, conjunction is in the middle of the frame, it's so much easier just to do it with moving the gears rather than just unscrewing the tripod, adjusting the head. Right, okay, I'm no astrophotographer, let's admit that. But straight away, I can see the ring around Saturn and the moons of Jupiter. But I've got the 500 and I've got a two times teleconverter, which we will be putting in a moment. And I just want to see how close you can get to see the conjunction because it's just something that fascinates me. So yeah, let's now switch on to the two times teleconverter and see what we can see. I'm using the Mark III two times teleconverter for F lenses as the 500 PF is an F lens and the 5.6 goes to F11. But we'll see what we'll get between, you know, different ISOs. I'm really excited to see what you can see first in full frame 4K mode, basically being 1000 millimeter focal length. So the main trick that I'm trying to achieve in here is now that I've got the 500 on the two times teleconverter, this is 1000, I can shoot in DX mode, which will be a 1.5 crop, meaning 4K in 1500, and then extract just the middle 1080p from that 4K, giving me double that. So 1080p at 3000 millimeter. DX mode, two times teleconverter, 125th F11 ISO 1600. DX mode 4K again, 125th F11 ISO 800 this time, uh, two times teleconverter on. Uh, F16, 125th, ISO 6400, two times teleconverter, DX mode. Right, it's quarter to six, and I've noticed that as the conjunction of the two planets started going lower and lower on the horizon, the sharpness that I was getting was decreasing drastically. The same settings I was using, um, 5.6 and the ISO and the shutter speed was getting me less sharp results. So the best tip that I can give you from an astrophotography noob, to be honest, is if you got this setup and you want to get the sharpest images, the moment that it will get dark, that you will see the two planets, shoot it the highest you can in the sky, because the lower you get, most likely some earth heat starts to emit and you're shooting just above where the heat gets emitted and it just softens your images. So I think the best results I got were the earliest ones I got here today at around five o'clock and it was almost double the height that it is at the moment. But yeah, you can still see it with a naked eye. The two planets are quite bright, which is just fascinating. But lastly, I wanted to just check something, how much the amount of light that can come in through the lens will get me a sharper image. So I will take down this 500 millimeter and put my 105 millimeter 1.4. Will be much further away, but I will try to get it again in the 4K DX mode. Zoom in on the 4K. So we're gonna get around um, 300 mil, there and thereabout. Okay, we got the light sucking beast, which is the 105 1.4. Now let's see how much we can actually zoom in on it to, well, get something decent. Bear in mind, the conjunction is now quite low on the horizon. So what's affecting this shot is all sorts of 
atmospheric heat and stuff that I have to shoot through. So currently I'm shooting in DX mode. So on the 105 times 1.5, it is this amount. And as I'm shooting in 4K, I can punch in another two times and this is looking pretty decent. 125th of a shutter, 1.4, ISO 1600. And you can literally see the moons. Um, can't see the ring, but you can see the moons. It's just fascinating that on a lens like this at full darkness, I can shoot somewhat decent clean video, 1600, the Z6 copes perfectly fine with. You can actually see it just above the motorway there. That is, wow. The FX mode, ISO 3200, 125th, 1.4. Uh, 125th, 1.4, ISO 3200. And we're shooting in DX mode 4K, pretty sure of that. So yeah, that's pretty funky actually to see this on the 105 mil, but let's quickly get back onto the 500 because uh, the conjunction is nearing to horizon from where I am. And I possibly on the 500 will see it with something on the horizon. So we'll just wait until it actually hides past the horizon. It's actually got quite cold. Right, where are we? Okay, I found them. Uh, it's pretty much not visible with the naked eye. Had to crank the ISO. Yeah, the haze is so bad and barely see them. So the moment it's actually so low on the horizon, it's not even worth shooting, I think. That's it. Uh, I didn't even get to see them going all the way to the horizon because when on the 500 in DX mode, so at 750, when I could see the horizon at the bottom and the two planets at the top of the frame, they literally started disappearing. And I'm at currently 5.6, 1 25th of a second, and I saw 12,800. And I know high ISOs can just be eating stars, but yeah, before I was able to use that and see them, now I just literally can't see them. And it's way past, it's like 15 minutes ago, I couldn't see them with the naked eye. Now they're just invisible. So yeah, that's that. Thanks a lot guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the sort of experience where you can see on the 500 millimeter PF and with a two times teleconverter and then with the FX mode, DX mode and cropping into the 1080p, which I found pretty cool. Um, I'm absolutely not claiming to be an astrophotography professional. I just like using the equipment that I have and testing it and seeing what I can get. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video and it gave you an insight to sort of what my other videos are like, where I take you with me, show you the gear that I'm shooting and show you the images or the videos or the time lapses that I'm capturing with it. So yeah, if you're totally into astrophotography, you won't see that much of it on my channel, but you can see a lot of architecture and cityscape and the way I use my Nikon equipment predominantly in my videos. I think that's it, guys. Um, follow me at London Viewpoints on Instagram, and I'll see you in the next video.